Now, the liquor industry is on edge as it awaits news of whether or not the sector will face another ban. President Cyril Ramaphosa, of course, expected to announce some changes to help manage the rising infections. This, as some provinces have already announced, they've entered the third wave. Cases continue to rise as the cold season sets in. Industry leaders are suggesting tighter restrictions, not a blanket ban. Well, let's hear what the National Liquor Traders Council has to say. I'm joined via Zoom by Lucky Timani from the organization. Very good afternoon to you, Lucky. Thank you so much for your time. Now, I may have missed this earlier in the week, but you did call for a meeting with the president to essentially have discussions with him as to what he would like to do. And you guys are obviously putting, on, uh, putting down suggestions as to what he should do so as to not blanket ban alcohol. Did you ever get that meeting? Uh, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity, Morena. So no, we, we haven't uh, uh, been granted the meeting with the president. We understood that his diary was uh, fully packed, which we fully respect. Uh, as as is a number one citizen, we expect him to be busy. So we are appreciative that they did uh, consider a meeting, but it was not possible based on his diary. But uh, based on, on where we are now, I mean, we are seeing the numbers rising. And equally, we are concerned as a liquor industry, but specifically as a tavern sector, you know, that uh, this might lead to some form of restrictions being meted out uh, against us. But we are cautioning the president to really consider scientific evidence when it comes with suggestions that will ensure that mitigate against the rise in the numbers as we land into the third wave and really consider some of the suggestions that we have put forward in terms of ensuring that maybe we look at the issue of cave view as well as uh, limiting the uh, number of gatherings uh, that are allowed, uh, as well as ensuring that, you know, this, uh, the non-pharmaceutical interventions are had, but also that they are policed by law enforcement officials. There much has been said about the fact that alcohol is nowhere near the problem for, you know, the 4,000 uh, cases that we're seeing every day, at least for the last couple of days, and that it is, as you mentioned, those gatherings that have been allowed to happen, the fact that the curfew is all the way until 12 o'clock, and also the bigger, even bigger problem is that there just is no enforcement of these rules that have been put bare. Would you agree? Yes, I'll, I'll certainly agree. And we need to also take into consideration that we have compliance fatigue creeping in as the third wave of COVID-19 accelerates. And we need to put in a lot of work on the ground to make sure that we encourage our people to uh, not only get vaccinated, but really to you know, observe all those non-pharmaceutical interventions. This is not a job of government alone, but we as civil society, as business people, we need to be able to support governments in all these efforts to make sure that we decisively deal with the issue of COVID-19. I think it's in our hands to be able to deal with this. And we really invite you know, the president to take us into his confidence when making decisions that will have an effect on our industry. And needless to say that you know, up to thus far, we haven't really been consulted on any decisions that are taken that have to do with our industry. We feel that that is unfair, and we are hopeful that you know, going forward, the president will take us into his confidence and level with us when he makes decisions that have to do with our families, with our livelihoods. What kind of restrictions would you be happy with from the president? And I ask this question because obviously we've seen uh, with our return to level two, for example, it's restricted from Monday to Thursday. Times are restricted in that, you know, on-site consumption at restaurants is what you can only do on weekends. What would you be okay with that would not cripple the industry? We, we haven't seen any scientific evidence that points to the liquor industry being party to the rise in the number of cases that we're seeing. So we will not really expect that there be any restrictions in the labor industry. Suffice to you know, accept the curfew because that will definitely uh, hit the, tab the, the restaurant sector as well as the tavern sector. But we feel that that is a gift that we're willing to give government as we support the initiatives to make sure that we fight the COVID-19 pandemic together. But we absolutely cannot uh, 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 accept or we are not even uh, expecting that there will be any restrictions or even a ban. And we are on record as saying that we're not going to participate in any ban that the government might institute without our consent. Now, I hear you obviously saying that there's no scientific uh, evidence that has been given, but of course we have gone through uh, bans and bans. We, we had a ban not just so long ago, now recently at the end of December into January. Um, how terrible is the bans when they do come, even if it is just restricted, uh, you know, brought down by a couple of days, brought down by a couple of numbers? You're saying that it's crippling the industry. How, how crippling is it really? So there's two major things that have happened since we had to endure the bans. Number one is that the illicit trade of alcohol has gone up to about worth 20 billion rand per annum. And also the fact that most of our businesses have not been able to come back online, meaning that we've got now uh, lots of taverns that have not been able to open. And those that are operating are operating at, uh, at minor cash reserves in such a way that if we were to ever endure harsh restrictions or even a ban, 
those businesses will never be able to come back. At least with COVID-19, we've got a vaccine to deal with that. But we have no vaccine to deal with the poverty that will come as a result of the bans or restrictions that government might make against our sector. So we are very concerned, you know, when we had the talk of a ban and restriction because really it's not justified in entertaining that. I think the conversation not to move to is government doing enough to make sure that beds are there, beds have been secured. We've been going through this for the past 15 months. What has government done to ensure that the health sector is geared for the third wave? We should not really be talking about, you know, issues of what is it that we need to do because government should have actually been proactive in making sure that we are prepared for the third wave. And I can tell you that we are going to face the fourth wave and fifth wave. The question is, is government ready for that? What have they done? What have they, what plans have they put in place to make sure that we're able to, you know, go through those ways without having to look at alcohol as a naughty child that must be whipped all the time. We have to deal with the COVID-19. Are you saying that government has actually not done enough to ensure that we avoid this and that they are finding alcohol to be an easy escape? Yes, uh, and we're worried that uh, in not so long, we will actually be blamed for even load shedding. Government always uses alcohol as an excuse to cover their, their incompetence in dealing with the issue of COVID-19 disease. How then do you go forward? The, the, the cabinet and the NCCC is sitting here listening to you as like in Timani. How then do you go forward with the conversation? I know you've asked that going forward, they take you into their confidence because they, they clearly haven't with every ban that they've instituted. What would you like the government to come back to the Liquor Trading Council to say? The first step is to secure a meeting with the president. Uh, we are not even interested in talking to the DTIC anymore because Ibrahim Patel is missing action. He's not prepared to work with the industry. We have no confidence in him as the minister in charge of this sector. So we feel that the president is the only person who can help us move forward in this part. We do not feel that alcohol has a role to play in, in, in increasing the amount of COVID-19. And the president certainly knows that. We feel that the president needs to level with us and look at ways and means in which if we are ever subject to any restrictions, there needs to be a financial package that is able to push in against the blows of such restrictions. We haven't received a single cent from government since we've been uh, in these lockdowns or restrictions in one way or another. We feel that it's about time that government really covers for us in the losses that he, the president, puts us through. So we are grateful, we're hopeful that going forward, the government is going to sit with us so that we can all look at solutions in which we as the sector can come through and support government in all their efforts to make sure that we fight COVID-19 pandemic. But we take exception to the fact that we're always the, the weeping child when the issues of alcohol, especially the cases arising, uh, come to the fore. So we feel that there needs to be a way, there needs to be a middle ground in which we're able to work through this together.